Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I appreciate you watching. If you would, like and subscribe. I come out with videos every week, so hopefully I've got something for you. Uh, this week I'm going to be talking about my rods and why I choose what I do. I use three different, so I, let's say ideally, <laughs> I would use falcon rods. I'm not associated with falcon, so it's, um, you know, I, I'm a budget angler like everybody. You only have so much money. So, but if I had to choose certain rods, it would be Falcon. I have no affiliation. My shop, Summerland Outdoors, that I'm a, that I, you know, I'm on their team. Uh, and I do get a discount on them, so that's just a, the preface of it. But they have like every single type of rod, so pretty much you can check them out. Summerland Outdoors, you can find them online, uh, and they have great. Right now, they're having a lot of great sales on rods too, if you're interested. And it will be over the next couple of weeks. But ideally, if I were going to choose any rods, it would be Falcon rods. Um, and there's three different lines that I use. I use the Low Rider, the Expert, and the Kara. Low Rider is the least expensive. They're $130. Experts are $200. And then Kara is top of the line. They're $250. And uh, so all of them are great. If you're, you know, if you only, if you have a budget and you can't spend a lot of money, then absolutely the low riders are the best $130 rod in the, on the market to me. So I really feel like they're great value for what they are. Uh, but I'll start and say <clears throat> kind of the different, you know, if you only have so much money you want you, and you're buying rods, you want to spend your money where you need to. So I'll start first with the low rider, uh, this specifically their swim jig rod. I don't have a lot of room in here, so I'm sure I'm going to hit the walls, but uh it's backwards there, but the low rider looks great. It's like a kind of a light, you know, and, and that's one of the great things about Falcon. I don't like the real flashy rods. I like something that's just real simple looking, you know, classic, old school, simple looking. But the rod's black, um, and it's kind of got this gold and, mar you know, gold striping with maroon, kind of a dark, 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 dark brown. Uh, not maroon, doesn't have a red hat, but a dark brown. It's kind of sequoia, actually, if you're into Fords, old Fords. But, um, yeah, and I use this for a swim jig rod, and I have a few low riders. That's kind of like a, let's say, I would use, I would use, I think I have three, but I use the low riders for applications where I don't need something as sensitive. So, like a swim jig rod, I can see it, I'm usually visually fishing whenever I'm fishing a swim jig up in the grass so I can see the bites coming I can see the fish flash on it and um and so there's really no reason to spend the money on a really expensive rod whenever a low rider $130 rod will work in that application so I use it for frogs I use it I have a buzz bait rod and my swim jig rod are all falcon low riders great $130 rod but if if there's you know, specific techniques that you need that aren't as, where you don't need the high dollar rods, low rider is a great way to go. And again, all around $130 rod. I've used a lot of inexpensive rods in my day, and they're easily the best. Uh, they have a good cork handle. I happen to like cork. Um, but they're, you know, good cork handles. And I'll tell you what, the guides are good. Um, single footed guides. So I guess that would be a negative if you're a kayak angler. All, all the falcon rods are single-footed. So, I mean, a double-footed are a lot heavier. Like I have an Evergreen Air National rod. And they're good, but that rod is a whole lot heavier. The low rider and all these and these other two are much, much lighter than the Evergreen. But the Evergreen might be a little bit more durable. I've never had an issue at all, zero issues, with any of my falcon rods. Knock on wood. But uh, be a single-footed guide. If I were going to make a kayak specific rod, it'd probably be double footed. I would give up a little bit of weight for that. But again, I use them. They're, I think they're the best. So there you go. So less expensive techniques where you don't need the high dollar stuff. Low rider. Great. They also sell a Buku and, um, and a couple of other rods. Jason Christie. I think you can get that at Walmart. But they're, you know, I, I don't go down that low. The uh, They have like the EVA foam handle grip. I don't really like that. I like when wing grips. I like cord grips. Those would be the two. Um, and Cashin. I don't really like their their grips either. I'm not putting them down because I think they're really good rods. I just, I'm not into a carbon fiber grip. I, I think it's tough on your hands. Maybe I got soft hands. I don't know. But, uh, but, they, but the Cashin's good too. There's a lot of good rods out there. Falcon, I just think is the best. 
So, low rider. Great rod. Uh, again, I don't need to say it over and over, but great all around rod. $130. Good deal. This here is an expert. Again, doggone, it's backwards. So, take off the deal here. You can see black and red. It says expert on there. Also, cork grips. Um, this is the 610 head turner. Uh, that's why I use it for, but I can show the core grips here. And the last one I'm going to show is the the Kara, but I think this one and the Kara, they have the same guides. The kind of that they're a little blue. Um, I know arc rods use some. It's it's a I think the uh, a Fuji guide, single foot single. Well, these the bottom is double footed, but past that they're single footed. And you can see what I mean by single footed. It only has one connection point to the rod and this one here if you can see it has two so single footed double footed guides uh, double footed are a little bit more durable um, expert if you really don't need to go up to Kara I'll say that because I only have two Karas um, the expert is $200 I think the the eight foot ones 220 but it's that 200 is man Whenever you get 200, you have a great rod. I usually never go over that because uh, 200, I find, is that's kind of the sweet spot for rods, really. Uh, you know, inflation, everything's going up. But $200 for the last few years has really been like a uh, the right level of where I want to be for a kayak rod because I usually don't want to go too high end because I'm really rough on my gear. Uh, again, never had a problem with Falcon, but that's just my thought on it. But the court grips, the guides, and the cork grips are much better on the expert than they are the low rider and the blank it's, it's a little bit lighter but not too much lighter because that low rider is like surprisingly light uh, so it's got a much better um, just your your rod itself uh, the blank there you go um, the blank is really good the expert it's just great all-around rod a 610 head turner is really good chatterbait um, and spinnerbait rod. I like the 610 because I, whenever I'm throwing those two, I'm usually not bomb casting. And you can still do it with a 610, but I like the 610 because I can really get into places. So I really like the uh, the the specific. Like whenever you go on their website, they'll give on Falcon's website, they'll give you a lot of tips on what technique this a certain rod's good for. And I really think that they're pretty pretty right on. The swim jig rod is super light, but I prefer the really light ones. The only problem I've ever had is maybe I'll lose like one or two fish a year because I'm throwing it back in such heavy cover with that swim jig rod. But 99% of the time, the swim jig rod, I like a real light one because it, I don't know, I just get a lot better hookup ratio. Kind of like a same thing with a fiberglass uh, chatterbait or swim jig uh, crankbait rod. You know, you either want to composite or a fiberglass well that used to be the thinking I guess a lot of people are doing graphite now, graphite now but it's really got a more moderate bend so that the fish hook themselves so low rider lower end expert middle $200 and you would be perfectly fine to stay with low rider I mean they are absolutely legit as good as the rods out there get at $200 price point and for me that's a good good price point I usually never need to go past that but every now and then you got to splurge on something. And I will say the Kara is pretty freaking unbelievable. It's the nicest rod I've ever owned. Uh, the couple I have, by far the nicest I've ever owned. Um, again, single footed guides. Well, the bottom two are double footed on this one. And this is a seven foot two I'm showing. But the um, it's lighter than the Expert. It also has a few more guides, so that's some of the cost. You're getting more guides, some more more guides, more sensitivity than the expert. I'm just saying what you get from the expert moving up to the the Kara. More guides. I think the the actual guides themselves are the same ones. There's just more of them. The rod is lighter. The blank is more sensitive than the expert, which is pretty crazy. But um, yeah, there it is, Kara beautiful too black the rod all on all of them are black but it's got that cool if you can focus there 
red and gold. They just look really classy. It's got a like a carbon fiber place where you tighten down the you know tighten down your reel. So that's super nice. I, I guess that's some weight saving. The grips I think are pretty much the same as the Expert. They might be a little bit different, but if they are, I can't tell a difference. So that's a big difference is you're getting a better rod, a more sensitive blank, a little bit lighter blank, more guides, which is more expensive, and uh, yeah, just excellent rod, top of the line for, for Falcon. Um, again, no affiliation, but that's the three I use. I use a low rider, the Expert, and a couple of Karas. Karas I use for, you know, those couple of techniques that I love the most. I've got one for a flipping rod. Uh, you know, seven foot three heavy Amistad. I like that for my four clar four fluorocarbon flipping. Um, so whatever baits I'm flipping, half ounce stuff like that. You know, the usual flipping. I use a seven two. I use that for my lighter finesse jigs. I have like a lighter grass finesse jig, a lighter ball head jig. Whenever I'm fishing rock and weightless six inch senkos, I, I use a six inch senko a lot. Um, It'd be, it's a good all-around rod for a lot of different things. But those two techniques, I'd say anytime you want to go from the low rider to the expert is whenever you're dragging something, whenever you really need to feel something, and it's not sight fishing. Um, and then expert would be techniques where you feel like you're, this is why I do it, where I really feel like they're my, you know, my go-tos, my most important, and things I'm doing all the time are things that I think I'm the best at. I'm going to splurge and spend a little bit of money on a Kara over the Expert whenever, you know, whenever it's those couple of techniques. I'd like to have more, but, you know, it's tough to do. Uh, it is a lot of money. And it's an investment. Hopefully they should last for a long time, for years and years, and not have to replace them. And that's that's really another thing. Whenever you buy a nicer rod, you never need to swap it. And that's, you know, I have old a couple of old G Loomis I use for cranking, and they're the G2. I think they're eight years old. I have no plans to get rid of them. G Loomis are good too, but uh, I actually bought those from my father-in-law. Um, and they're just good, good all-around cranking rods. And I don't I don't really think there's anything on the market that's so much better that would make me want to change. And I think they were $200 rods whenever they came out. So these experts and Karas, I'll be keeping them for a long time. I'm sure I'll keep the low riders for a long time too. Maybe if I got to a point where all my tackle is upgraded to super nice stuff, then I would start back over with upgrading the stuff that's like that mid-range, like the low rider, but really that there's just no reason to because they're so good for swim jigs, buzz baits, frogs, things like that, where you don't need that ultra sensitivity. Perfect rod for it. So there you go. There's my uh, my explanation of the, the rods I like. I have uh, a couple of favorites I got on sale. I have a couple of G Loomis. And a couple other things, I, have, I think I have an ARC, you know. If I were sponsored by them, sure, I'd have all Falcon, and that's eventually what I want to get to. But reality is, you know, you got to spend your money where you can because things are so expensive. But, uh, yeah, those are rods I use and the ones I definitely prefer. I hope this helps. If you will, get, uh, again, like and subscribe. I sure would appreciate it. And I'll see you all again on next video. Thank you.